Hello and welcome to the Sable International Citizenship Podcast. My name is Shannon and I'm here with Michelle Patel, Director of our Immigration and Citizenship Division. British citizenship is a fascinating topic. There are all kinds of common and uncommon dues with strict deadlines in terms of an application age. This is why we feel podcasts like this one is crucial. This is the first episode of our podcast series we will be focusing on British citizenship for children under 18. In the second part series, Michelle and I will explain in detail all the routes to British citizenship for children under 18. We'll be touching on routes such as citizenship by birth and descent through a parent, citizenship through double descent, as well as the complex and rare route to British citizenship by triple descent. We will also discuss examples of cases where British citizenship was awarded through adoption out of the UK and what to watch out for when you're having a child through surrogacy. We will also cover registration as a British national for children under 18 through their British parents' previous UK residency. You can find a transcript and the episode show notes on our website, www.sableinternational.com. Michelle, how are you doing? It's been a while since you've done one of these, right? Absolutely, Shannon. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's been a while since we've done this one. There's been um, quite a bit of demand for for um, some 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 new routes that uh, no doubt our listeners have heard have taken have taken um, a lift. Um, but um, but yeah, no, it's been a while. I'm excited to be back, and I'm excited to uh, you know explain all about British citizenship, especially for such a lovely topic like uh, children. Yeah, so I know you're quite excited about this podcast series and I have a soft spot for when it comes to cases involving children. Um, can you expand on why? Sure. Um, I, I guess, naturally, children, cute. Um, but more than that, I think it's a little bit of... But it, it's a little bit personal for me. Um, um, and, and you probably can find a link to sort of my story um, on, on, on this video. But, um, but do do hear it. And you, you'll see why a little bit more in detail. But in a nutshell, um, I myself was brought in by my, my mom uh, from Kenya as a child. So I was also not born in the UK. My mom wasn't born in the UK, but she was born in a previous UK colony. And through the help of actually the gentleman I work for now, which is why you need to view my story, um, she managed to get her British nationality. And then luckily... Just luckily, I happened to be under 18, whilst a minor, to then be brought into the UK for settlement. So had she not done that, I would don't think I would be here. So had she not got that advice in time, we would have missed the opportunity to get me into the UK, settled here, and nationality, if she had not learned about that route, which she had no clue about. But she did the right asking to the right people. And I'm hoping our listeners will do the same. That's amazing. So can you briefly um, tell us what type of person should listen to this podcast series? Absolutely. The, the, the type of person that should listen to this podcast series is not just naturally parents who have children under 18, especially those parents who have British citizenship. But even if you're a parent who doesn't have British citizenship, you have children under 18, you want to provide them a second opportunity, another Another passport is one way of doing that in the event they wanted those opportunities in the UK, for example. So hence the British nationality. So the type of person that needs to listen to it are not just British parents with under 18 children born out of the UK, which no doubt, you know, that is important to address before the 18th birthday, as they will learn throughout the course of this podcast. But even those who are not British, so parents who were born in South Africa or South African may have a UK-born great-grandparent or grandparent with perhaps a little bit of Northern Rhodesia, well, sorry, Zambia now, talking as if I'm back in the colonial days, <laughs> but also the Rhodesia, which now Zimbabwe, Nyasaland, now Malawi. If you have any of these connections in your family tree, you as a parent could have a claim to a British passport that could open up the doors for your children, especially if those children are about to reach their 15th to 18th birthday, that range. We don't want it to be too late. Um, also, the last type of person that I actually want to put this podcast to words, 
and it's very important that they listen to this, are those who are family planning or expecting, that are British or have claims potentially to British nationality. Please get in touch. You, you really do not, you, well, you can't reverse childbirth. So you do not want to have that child out of the UK if it turns out through investigation you can't pass on that nationality that you hold or could be holding British nationality to the child if born in South Africa, for example. So please reach out. That's amazing. I love that it's relatable to so many people. That's awesome. So let's get into the simplest form of getting British citizenship, which is by birth or descent. Obviously, being born in the UK to a British citizen is a given, but I understand that it becomes a bit more complicated if your child is born outside of the UK. Can you tell me more about that? Mm. Yes, I, I, I guess it could, it, it could be complicated. Um, and, and I guess it's complicated because the UK um, <clears throat> of traditionally have always just allowed nationality go by descent to a single generation born out of the UK. So, for example, if I'm born in the UK and I've got my nationality by birth, if I have a child born to me outside the UK, then that child should automatically become a British citizen and apply for a British passport. That's that single descent that the UK law does permit. Of course, um, things that could hamper that situation is where the child's adopted, which we'll cover as we go on, or there is this surrogacy thing going on, which also happens. So there are complications there, um, or the child is born out of a marriage, which the UK has traditionally not allowed uh, for nationality to pass over a father's child, where that happens. But I guess the real complication that I see on my day-to-day -day life here at the firm and the questions I get asked by clients when I'm visiting South Africa and having our, our uh, roadshow, which is now coming up right here, so exciting, um, is I'm born out of UK, my dad was born in the UK, I now have a child born to me. So now this child's nearest UK-born ancestor is their grandfather or grandmother. That's when you run into complications, Shannon, because then you're looking at citizenship by double descent. So that's yeah. when you get born out of the UK and you don't have the UK connection near enough for a straight citizenship claim. And we have to look at various ways, which we will cover in, yeah. in our next podcast, which is British citizenship by double descent. But um, in a nutshell, please let this is exactly why it's crucial to know what type of British citizen you are. Are you British by birth? or what they call British by descent. Yeah. If you're classified as British by descent, you can't pass a nationality onto a further generation born out of the UK, whereas those by birth can. Unfortunately, the UK does like making things complicated, and the definition of who's by descent, who's by birth, is actually within the statute law mm -hmm. and open to interpretation. So it, it takes a little bit of knowing where to look and how to read it to understand which type you are. Because it's not apparent from one's British passport, as you know, my British passport and someone in South Africa, their British passport looks exactly the same. Yeah. But it's not. We're not a type of the same type of British nationals. I'm British monetization. If I have a child born to me in Kenya, the child will be British. But that's not the same for maybe someone in South Africa who holds a British passport that has a child born to them there now. That's interesting. So there was some discrimination when it came to unmarried couples in the immigration law. When was this remedied and how did the law change affect children born out of wedlock after a British father, for example? So, as I said earlier, with British nationality and the UK, there are certain so do's and don'ts and as such. Um, may not be that acceptable in today's society, so hence it was changed, but that change was in retrospective. So just going back a step, if I may, British nationality by descent, um, when it comes from a father, to a child born out of UK, perhaps, um, you can, that, that father can only pass on that British nationality if that child was born legitimately. And that ch only changed in July 2006. So it's only in that month that, that they said, okay, we still think it's an issue, but if you can prove paternity, and there's a way to do that, but that's even covered by law, what kind of evidence you need to give, but if you can prove your paternity, then you can claim your dad's nationality, even if you're born out of a marriage. Okay? Well, but that law, that change, was not retrospective. 
So anyone born before July 2006 still had an issue. And how the firm's been able to remedy uh, or a successful remedy for that that we've been able to um, sort of action and, 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 and use has been registering the child at the discretion of the home office. Now, hence, it needs to be submitted before the 18th birthday. So typically, this would be someone, say, born in 2000 in South Africa, where the father was born in the UK and the parents never got married. We would want to submit an application for their registration as a pre-season before the 18th birthday as a remedy that they can't automatically claim it from their dad. So first register them, acquire a registration certificate, and then use that to apply for their first British passport. So that would be the immediate remedy. Um, now, obviously, off lately, the 18th birthday has become less relevant because there is an adult version of that registration available, which we won't go into now because it's main, this podcast is made for children under 18. Yeah. But if you ask someone listening to this and you think, oh, but my child is just under 18, if you think it's relevant, you should still approach us because there is a, there is a new set of recently introduced laws that do allow someone like that that's over 18 um, to register as a person um, through their father because they were born out of a marriage. Amazing. So is there anything else that is um, pertinent to citizenship by the same? Um, yes, yeah. Um, I think the the other main one that I want to talk about when we consider British citizenship by descent um, is, please, if anyone's listening to this podcast, don't ignore um, not just the 18th birthday looming, but don't also ignore the 15th birthday. I said that earlier, and I just want to expand on that. If your child is about to turn 15, and you're a British by descent, meaning you already asked us and we've already confirmed you can't pass it on to your child your child is not a British citizen now then it could be that we can relocate the family into the UK before the child's 15th birthday and the reason for that is specifically before the child's 15th birthday is because then we can amass a three-year period before the child turns 18 of UK residents so the entire family can be here for three years before the child turns 18 and we can apply to register the child whilst in the UK. So, again, if you're listening to this, we are dwell, dwelling a little bit into a formal way to get citizenship by descent, but I think it's equally important. I can't help myself to put, just to mention that just in case someone views this and the child is about to turn 15 in the next year or so, but the family will think of relocating here anyway. Yeah, so um, if it, like as an example, if I was a parent and I wanted to find out if my child was British by descent, like what are my next steps? Like tell us a bit about how your team can help in cases like this and why mm. someone should necessarily use Sable or use a company like Sable. Sure. So I guess... I guess I could summarize quite quickly. That's that's an easy one. Um, the next steps is that you reach out to our team. We have a team in Cape Town, as you know. We have a team in the UK. And both these teams are excellent at taking your query and translating that into a family tree to understand who's who and how the claim could work. And they'll work with our team of British nationality specialists in the UK to confirm for no fee at all, right? To confirm for no fee at all through a status trace service, again, repeat, no fee at all, whether you have a likely claim and unclear claims where we need to do more research or is it just unlikely and you're then better off speaking to someone like myself or my team to design a route to UK citizenship by future UK residents and one of them being before the 15th birthday. So, Please, the links will be provided. Um, click them. Give as much information as you can to me and my team. And once you give that information, let us do our job and we will come up with a solution for you and your family and confirm once and for all whether the children are British already or can they get British citizenship in another fashion, perhaps in the future. How does that work? So that's number one. Number two, second part of your question was why Sable? Well, why Sable? Because if I was a client, I would want to know two things. 
do I have a claim? Yes or no. Otherwise, I'm wasting my time and wasting your time. And I don't want to be doing either. Sabre is able to give that initial advice for no fee and it is actually quite accurate. And we were not sure, we will say unclear, we're not sure, and this is why. So actually, that's number one, which I've never found that to be the case for any of the practitioners that I've come across in my time whilst going through the process myself to become a British citizen. Everyone first asks for instructions, a fee, and then they'll see whether you have a claim or not. Secondly, and this is an important one because things are not cheap. And I've been through the process, I know how it is. Okay. Um, is Sable always values itself, not just in the customer service and that you get a whole team behind every case. So it's getting triple checked. But in the event we get it wrong, in the event the Home Office come back and say, hmm, no, you've got your theory completely wrong here. It does happen. We're all humans. We make mistakes. Okay. Um, we actually give all our money back. And that's, that's what it is. So there's a full refund of our fees if we get it wrong, even though we are the ones that initially said you have 100% of a claim. If we said to someone, Shannon, you have a 100% yes claim, and we get it wrong, it's all the money back. Every cent. And we do not want people leaving Sable feeling that they wasted their time and money. And that's why we have an excellent track record with the UK government. And so, yeah, so that's another good reason as well. I'll add one more reason that I just thought of, by the way, <laughs> which is not only do we just isolate one claim, but we look for the best claim. A lot of practitioners, in my opinion as well, sometimes go for what is face value. No one asks the right questions to dig deep to ask, well, what is the plan if you get citizenship? Because it could be, Shannon, that it's not a good idea of becoming a British citizen. And actually, it's more expensive if one of the parents becomes a British citizen and then moves a family to the UK as compared to becoming a British citizen perhaps afterwards in the UK because of how the immigration laws work. So you have to look at it as a wholesome and ask the client, what is the big picture here? Okay, but it may not be the best option for them, even though I could earn a fee, but that's not the point. The point is, you know, and one of our core values I say with is care. So we, want, we really do care. We want to give you the best advice, even if it means here's advice, go away. Once you come into the UK, then approach us even though we lose out on the initial fee. Because it could be that it spells more problems if, if we go down the other route. So again, I've found that we're really good at that. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thank you for your time and thank you to everyone who tuned in today. I hope you all join us for our next episode in this podcast series. British Citizenship by Double Descent for Children. See you all then. Bye.